interview and job search strategies that work. In this podcast, I'd like to talk to you about getting a job anywhere, basically. And more importantly, I'd like to focus in on computer science degree. So those of you who are going out and getting your degree in computer science, particularly the ones who live in Asia, that's who I'm focusing right right now. Uh, I want to talk to you about strategies on how you can get a job, and not only in the States, but it'll apply as well in other countries such as Canada and Australia. So first things first, in your school, you have about probably 100 students, something like that. Let's assume that you have 100 students. So your competition is 100 people or 99 in that matter. So if you're going to computer science, I can tell you, here's the skills that you need to have. You really have to have them. C++ is very critical, so you have to know that. You have to know the theory behind that. And I'll go over a couple of courses that I pulled from uh, one of the courses in Batangas University, and I want to go over that. Okay, it's a Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, BSIT. So the first course is an introduction to computing. It's called uh, IT111. So there's a couple different resources for that. Udemy, of course, Udemy, Udemy. Khan Academy. Um, more importantly, other things like learning on your own, teaching yourself. If you're not able to do that, I know there's lots of uh, simulators out there that you can use. Uh, not a lot, but there's Linux simulators online, and there's some Windows simulators online that you could uh, go in and, and play for free. Basically, just get your uh, understanding of how computing works a little bit. Now, I know that's dealing more with like probably um, talking about, hey, here's the binary part, uh, port, port, part, such as like uh, and or nand, maybe some gates in there, maybe some of the, um, the history of uh, computing, maybe going back to Linux, Unix, uh, Bell Labs back in time there. Uh, maybe when it started, I think it was Turing, Alan Turing who started uh, or who made it possible, like computing basically happened, going back to maybe Babbage, uh, all the way back to probably the Abacus. So the other course is Math 103, which is college algebra. Now, of course, you need algebra if you're in IT. You need to know uh, coding. You need to know some algebra because some of the functions are the same, of course. Let's move on past that. So you got math uh, 121, which is probability and statistics. Um, and then you have um, English 100, which is English plus. So, of course, that's more than just, hey, here's how you learn English. I'm prob pretty sure it has more to deal with, like, how to interact or certain, um, certain ways to say things or maybe uh, certain phrases. And also probably has to do with uh, reading and comprehension. So be able to read um, a report, maybe read a, a tech manual, and then comprehend it and kind of t tell your team about it or tell your colleagues about it and kind of regurgitate it to them. That's what it deals with. That I would say that skill is, is very high up there and is really needed uh, for you. And you got to understand that you speak two languages. Most likely you speak English and you speak your native tongue. And, you know, most people in the States only speak one. So just know that. That's just how it is, right? And, of course, you're going to have it to where people look at you and you don't know and they're going to uh, treat you a certain way. And that's just how it is. That's just how it is, you know. Um, this, you know, it's not like that probably in your country or wherever you're from, but that's just how it is here. That's just the way it is. Anyway, so you can either... Um, look at it and talk about it and blah, blah, blah. Or you can say, you know what? Uh, I get it. Let me work my way around it because I see that as a obstacle. Let me, let me work past that actually. So the other one is introduction to humanities and art appreciation. I get it. Maybe it's a curricular activity. Okay. You need to throw it in there. I get it. They just need to throw something else in there. So I get it. Um, it, perhaps it's it's useful. Introduction to humanities um, could be like, you know, uh, how do cultures work? How do different cultures interact? How do they think? Uh, what are the traits of different cultures? The other one, which I think is really critical, so I put that up with like maybe a 1A, 
and that's SS101, which is general psychology. So that one is so critical in the IT department, so critical. Because I'll tell you, you know, your your perspective is like how how um, some of the West view the Asian types is this. The introverted type, um, you know, you very, you know, firm with family, um, not uh, critical thinkers, not free thinkers, not, uh, um, you know, go with, go with the, go with the crowd, whatever the crowd does, you do, uh, not really a leader. That's probably, you know, of course that's not true for everybody, right? By the way, just our it's just what the West, uh, the assumption is, right? So not everybody, just, you know, a herd. And so the introduction to, I mean, the general psychology will really help you to understand how to read people and really um, understand that, like, not everybody, um, not everybody has passion. Not everybody has amb- ambition. Maybe you have ambition and you want to do something. But not everybody wants to do that. You know, you'd be surprised uh, when you if you come to the States to see people who are like um, working and they complain about their job. They complain about how much money they don't have. And these are people who are natively born here or whatever. And you're a foreign person that comes here. You're an immigrant, let's say, and then you come here and you work hard to come here. And yet these people here are complaining about their jobs or they don't have m- enough money. And you're like, wait a minute, you're, you're, you know, you have all this opportunity available to you. Well, in their, I'll tell you, in their mind, they don't. And understanding that, and, you know, some do, some don't. That's just how it is. Um, You know, I don't know why other people don't. I don't know why other people do. I have no idea. And that's just how it is. So understanding that and maybe coming to grips with it, uh, everybody probably has that where you know you have a relative or a friend who you're like oh if they would just do this they would get it you know they would they would make it happen captain but they just don't and you know that's just how it is any rate uh moving on so a couple resources for that uh there's seven strategies for wealth and happiness by with jim Rohn. um in his some of his uh talks he talks about like um uh, why do people, why do some do and some don't? And he goes like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> Basically he's saying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go down that rabbit hole, you know? Okay. Just focus on people who do focus on people who, um, who resonate with you versus that. And, you know, it's going to sound a little, I guess it's going to sound a little cold to say that because there are those out there who don't know what they want and they want you to just listen until, you know, like three or four times later, then, okay, then they'll take action or then they'll do it, right? And that, that can be hard, actually, by the way, because when you see something and you see individuals who maybe you're in, let, you know, say you're in IT field and they're not in an IT field and you're like, you know, it's so easy to get a job in IT, especially, you know, if you're in the States, let's say, and they're like, oh, it's so hard to get a job and they're working at McDonald's or something like that, right? And you can see how easy it is, but they can't. And whatever they listen to is a reflection on maybe their attitude or whoever they listen to, basically. Uh, maybe the people they're around as well. Because, you know, you got to figure if they're working at McDonald's or whatever and they're complaining about their life, that there's no opportunities, what does that say? Is that something about them that they're not, you know, um, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe there's one little thing they haven't gotten over that maybe they don't feel valued themselves. Um, Maybe they just, you know, it's too much stress for them. You know, maybe there was an experience they had uh, before where there was an opportunity and there was a risk involved. So they didn't want to take that risk. And, you know, to, to most people, that's a risk, changing jobs, getting, you know, even it's more money, it's a risk. And some people just don't want to take the risk, even if it's more, they just like, they're good. they're good. And I get that, right? The other book I'll say is The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, that's an audio book as well, right? And as well as a couple more, actually. Influence, uh, Industry Influencers, Influencer Road Trip, Keys to Success, 17 Principles of Personal Achievement. And anything by Cheeky Tan, 
Uh, he's a wealth coach. Uh, he's out of, uh, I think, Batangas or Manila, I think he works out of. So the other course is uh, physical education, gymnastics, aerobics. Okay, we get that, right? Okay, here's the next one, CS111. This is computer programming. So this one's really one you want to pay attention to. This is the one that you want to come in late or you want to come in early and stay late for. Because this is one of those core uh, core curriculums that you really need to learn. learn. So they're probably going to teach you about C++, um, the history, of course, of programming uh, and th those things. So on this one, while you're going to school, the next one is um, CSS 111, which is computer programming. So computer programming is really critical with your job, really critical. And what do you learn there? You're going to learn, of course, C++ with programming. You're going to learn the... The history of computer programming, how it started, how it got its, um, uh, why it's important, why it was important, how the, what's the benefit of it, the why. This is one of those classes where you want to go in early and stay late for. This is one of those critical, critical courses that you definitely, um, would be beneficial for you basically, right? So moving on, Math 107, that's plain trigonometry. So basically it's just, I think it has to do with, uh, physical um, trigonometry, so for instance, shapes, and but I think it's more in depth. It has less about theory and more about maybe looking at um, uh, something to do with structures, uh, physical structures, how to maybe code them. Maybe some has something to do with that. The other one is uh, English 102, which is study and thinking skills. So this goes back to English 101, which was or sorry, English 100 rather, which was talking about um, how to, uh, you know, comprehend. So um, reading, reading and comprehension, thinking about learning about what what am I what am I uh, reading here? Because uh, when you get to IT, uh, when uh, computer based, but just computer programming or IT in general, you're going to get some stuff out there who like, oh, okay, that's what I need to do. And you're going to have to regurgitate it and maybe ask questions because I'll tell you, I'll tell you a lot of people in the IT field, they just, um, this is majority. Let me just tell you that, right? My IT, they, um, they like to know, like they'll ask a lot of questions like, okay, let me understand. And you'll run into the ones that are just like, uh, princess will reply to your message or something like that. And be like, oh, let me know the stats and this, you know, like, there's no context there. There's no reference point. So you have the ability to just uh, tactfully reach out and say, uh, you know, can, can you let me know or would you mind let me know um, what what is you're talking about tactfully? Uh, what what do you – when you mention this, what do you actually mean, right? So this actually should probably be more like a, uh email uh, email course, like how to properly email. I think that's really something that's really needed. The, you know, and not to just to get the point across, basically. OK, moving on. Humanities 102, Introduction to Philosophy. This one's a really cool one. This goes back to general psychology, you know, how people think, what are their cultures, their philosophies, uh, how they approach different things. And in IT, in IT, I'll tell you um, what you run into is they are very logical especially programmers, they just think logically. Now, there are emotions, of course, in there, but uh, a lot of times they are just logical thinkers. Like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Or they want to just, like, um, solve. They're trying to solve for X, right? And something, what you might want to say, sometimes I always say this is, do you, you know, somebody says, like, um, to you um, something and, that, you know, they're looking for either they're looking for you to get mad or they're looking for you to solve their problem. Basically, they they want to anger you or they want you to solve the problem. So what you might want to say is like um, something like this. Right. Here we go. Uh, would you like a logical response, an emotional response? That's what you tell them to whatever, whatever they said. Like they said, like, hey, my, you know, uh, I don't have enough money for to buy shoes. and I don't, really don't like it. I need a better job and whatever. And you might want to say, 
if it's directed at you, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you might want to say like, uh, if they look for your response, you say, would you like an emotional response or a logical response? Because I can give you both. I can tell you an emotional response is, oh, yeah, I, I understand, you know, the company doesn't give enough, us enough money. Um, it's very, they should give us more. Now, the phys- the logical response is, the logical response would be, well, uh, perhaps if you um, got a better job or if you saved extra income or if you had a side hustle, you would have enough money to buy those shoes. That's the example of a logical response. So, which actually leads into the next one, Humanities 104, which is logic. So logic is not necessarily logic response. It's more like the computer logic, how the binaries work, um, how the, uh, from like an like in-out spec uh, standpoint, like all computers are just ones and zeros. It's an on or off, basically, right? So that's what goes into a little more. You know, a better understanding of this would be, or how you would want to understand it perhaps, is to Google something or watch a YouTube video about semiconductors and how the actual chips are made. This will really give you, um, it's more of why. Okay, that's how uh, chips are made. And this is why programming is important because, of you know, the programmer can do this because this device, this chip can do this, right? The next one is IT211. Database management systems. So in this one, C plus plus as well, but this and de- deals with more like probably MySQL or an open source um, database. So databases are needed. There, by the way, there's only four real four databases in the world programs. Right? You have Oracle, which uh, okay, you have Oracle, you have MySQL, you have SQL Server, which is Microsoft SQL, and then you have DB2, which is IBM. So out of four, uh, four databases in the whole United in the world. Now there are ones that offset of those, but those are the the main four ones. So those are the ones that the companies they have the brand, they have the they're legitimized, they have uh, validation basically, right? All of those. So Oracle owns actually two. They own Oracle and they own MySQL. So they got two there right there out of the way. So really, there's only three three companies. So again, you have Oracle, you have uh, Microsoft, then you have IBM. And they own it, basically, right? Most of your databases for Oracle, those are for like finance, run finance, they run some uh, applications. So SQL, most of like your SharePoint, uh, most of like your Active Directory, most of your, mm, uh, let's see, yeah, some of those. I know some software applications run that as well. Some content management systems as well run that. And then IBM DB2, you know, I don't really have a lot of, I, I don't have a lot of experience with that, but I, it's, it's a pretty big, I know it's a pretty big uh, deal as well. And anything IBM is usually cumbersome. There's a lot of money involved in it. And uh, they probably need a lot of individuals who know it. So you have a, a good a good job. Um, I think AS400 might, I think DBT might be used in AS400, I believe. So moving on. So IT222, Advanced Database Manager Systems. Uh, same thing for database manager systems. You have four, or, and, you know, four, three companies and four databases, Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, and uh, DB2. So that's uh, just more of the database manager systems. CS-121 as Advanced Computer Programming. Here we go. What this gets involved with, now, mind you, this is like, is the, this is the second year, I believe. So this is in like your year two, by the way. So by your second year, Advanced Computer Programming. What does that mean exactly? Break it down for me, right? Um, okay, well, let's, let's go over, right? So adva- Advanced um, Computer Programming could mean something like Taking a website, maybe building a stack, if they, if you will. For instance, you might have uh, uh, C. Uh, you might build something with C plus plus, like a program, and then you might also have um, a data. Uh, it writes to a database, or maybe you might have a WordPress site. That's for example that writes to a database. You know, like uh, website writes data to website. Uh, that's an example of uh, advanced computer programming. Although it's it's, um, you know, in the real world perspective, it's a lot of coding. 
So you're a programmer, you probably won't be in your job fixing websites, most likely. You'll be in the back end doing code development, um, just doing a little bit of um, upgrades for code or just going through code and making it more efficient. And um, so that's a little bit about advanced uh, computer programming. So then the next one's IT412, Integrative Programming and Technologies. Wow. So what's that? That What does that mean? That means probably most likely it means taking C++. And how do I make it work with Java? How do I make it work with WordPress? How do I make it work with this application in the in the, United, in the world, in the, in the marketplace? Interactive programming technologies. That's what it means to me. There's some resources that I, I have as well uh, on this podcast that you'll see that I posted as well. So you can link to it. The next one is CSS, our CS122, which is data structures and algorithms. Wow. So this one I'm not really, I don't know a lot about, but I know that algorithms are very, uh, when you interview for a, a, C, um, a, a computer science job or like a job at Google or Facebook or pretty much anywhere that is programming, they ask you about algorithms. So because algorithms are the standard, they, you know, companies use the same algorithm. I know one that I've heard about does like a find and replace that's an algorithm. And you're going to have to know what they do. And then probably there's like four or five typical ones that they ask on interviews uh, for algorithms. But uh, that's really something to know. That's one of those other courses that you want to go in early and stay late for. uh, Because that's really, really uh, critical, right, by the way. The next one is CS131. That's object-oriented programming. I believe that's Java. I think Java uses uh, object-oriented programming, I believe. So um, I have a couple of videos on Java on my um, YouTube channel. Just go to just go to youtube.com and just type in Gary McNeely. I have a couple of videos on, on Java, the introduction to Java, how that works. The next course is Bio 101, Introduction to Biology. So, okay, biology. You need biology, I guess, elective. So let's just throw it out there. Okay. Um, you're really not going to talk about that because that's not really technic- That's not really related to IT, although you probably need it in this regard because it's a it's something that they want as a curriculum. So let's move on from that. The next one is uh, Engineering 106, which is technical communication. Here's a, here's a real critical one right here. How do you talk to non techs basically? How do you talk to? How do you get the message from a a non technical person to a manager? or a leader, basically, right? You, you talk to the technical person, and they, you know, give you this information. And you're, okay, okay, I got it, right? And then you take that information, and then you you give it to your leadership and say, this is what we're doing, basically. You're explaining uh, in regard. You're also, uh, you can take technical communication as being as well, as standing in a room, having meetings, be able to converse with other individuals, not technical and technical, about what you're doing and explain it in a way that makes sense to them. So basically you can have everything you want in life. If you just help enough people get what they want, that's the sum up this one here. And finally, the next one is it two two one, which is fundamentals of networking. So this doesn't mean uh, how do you network social networking? This means like how networking works in an environment, basically introduction. You might want to call something like, um, there can be algorithms as well, because in some of the routing, it has like, I think Dijkstra's algorithm, I think it is. It's not Lenny Dijkstra. <laughs> That's a, that was a baseball player a long time ago. I watched a video about the Phillies, and that was a baseball player. Um, him and John Crock and some other guy. Kurt Schilling, I think it was. Anyway, that was way back in the day. But uh, I watched a YouTube video recently about that. Anyway, so fundamentals of networking. Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, a lot of um, like OS, is it OSPF, I believe, uses that. Anyway, Juniper, um, a lot of your uh, vendors use, they use a form of uh, Dijkstra's algorithm to um, pass traffic throughout the network. And really, if you think about it, networking as a whole is all it is is code. You're taking this packet, you're taking something and routing it here. And it uses, um, it just uses 
type of coding. I don't know if it's machine coding or whatever, but it is able to take that uh, packet and able to push it from one point to the other. And that's a, it's a program essentially what that is. So let's get back to the meat and potatoes of this, this talk actually. So that that's all the courses there. So let's talk about this. So you're one of a hundred students in your college, right? And you're taking computer science. So a couple of different things you want to have in your, in your repertoire, basically, right? So I'll tell you. So definitely you're in your first year and I'm talking to you. You know who I'm talking to. First things first. I know that you work, you know, um, you work five days a week, right? Or whatever. And you go to school and you're tired, right? But take about an hour a week. First, take an hour a week and then, you know, move it up to four hours a week. And then from there, try to get in three, four hour uh, sessions uh, a week. So you have 12 hours, right? So start with just one thing or first do one thing. The very first thing you're going to need to have is you need to have a GitHub site. Got to have a GitHub site. Without that, you know, you got to you got to be able to differentiate yourself from your competition, you know, and I'd start day one. Same thing. You have your resume out there. You know, you don't have a CV. You have a resume and you're acting as if you're already in the States. You're not telling them you're not. But what you're after is you're after the interview. That's all you want right there. That's all you want. So if you have a GitHub site, that is, you can give that to them and it's like, oh, that's something tangible that they can see. They say, oh, okay. I can see they have a GitHub site. I see you have something on there. You have a couple uh, repositories. Maybe you fork. Uh, like easy R, easy CRT, you know, and then you just fork it and then it's there and you create your own repository for someone else. Maybe you create your own simple program. So maybe when you go to some of these courses that you take, for instance, uh, let's take one, uh, let's take, uh, CS one, one, one. So computer programming in computer programming, if they teach you a program, put that code out there, you know, create that code, put it in GitHub done, right? The other thing, the next one, so that's the first thing. Very first, just start with one. Don't get overwhelmed here. Just start with one. So slowly but surely get GitHub, then Reddit, then Twitter, then uh, Medium, then uh, and Pinterest, and TikTok, WordPress. Got to have WordPress, I definitely. Those are free. Uh, and then um, a YouTube channel, and then finally a Teachable course or a Udemy course that you create. So why do I tell you all this? What's the point here, right? So basically, you're going to go and you're going to interview with somebody in the States. And you're in your first year. And you need to know, what do I need to know? Because I don't know what my, I need to know what my skills are. Second thing that happens is, when you're interviewing with these people, there's a, it's almost like an, uh, what am I saying? I'm saying like this, you're in you're not in shock, but you're in, um, you're almost like a disadvantage, if you will, basically, because you, you, in your mind, I assume that you think, okay, they ha- they're they in the States, they know a lot, um, and they're just an IT, they're, they're just HR, basically. This is HR people you're talking to. So once you get past them, okay, I know how to do that. Um, because right away, what's going to happen is right away, they're probably going to read your name and they're going to think, oh, Asian, right? They're going to think a couple of things. Not always. I'm just, you know, just saying, right? Prepare for this, right? Just prepare for this. And you want to have it to where you can just talk to them like you've been in the States your whole life, basically, right? That's what you want to get after, by the way. That's the whole point here, right? Get after the point where you're talking to them like you're in the States. And if you if you have to ask, like, I'm sorry, what did you say? Or you know, if, if you say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And you don't, you don't wait for the pauses because like, for instance, they'll ask you a question and you say, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. What would be better to say is, oh, it's like this. Yeah. I've done a little bit of that. For instance, something like uh, they might want to ask like, um, have you done C plus plus before? And you and say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I have. Yeah. Yep. Instead of being, you know, kind of excited like that, what you want to do is you want to say like, oh, um, well, I've used, and they, say, they might want to say, they say like, oh, have you used C++? What you'll say is this. You say, I do, I have used C++. We use version, I think, 14 or whatever the version is now, um, or 17. I have a GitHub site as well that I, 
I, uh, I use to create codes as well. And then stop there and let them ask a question like, oh, I have a GitHub site. You say, they might want to say, what's that? And you say, well, that's a repository for a lot of coders, what they have. They may or may not know what that is, by the way. I have to explain it to them. So that's that. When you get to, uh, and, and that's your gatekeeper right there, the HR person, that's the gatekeeper. Uh, you want to get past them basically, right? So, and the reason you go on all these interviews that you're going to go on is you want to get where you're comfortable with talking to folks. You want to get where you're comfortable talking to individuals, HR people in the States or whatever, to where, okay, it's easy now, right? Yeah, you're, you're good. Because you imagine you're probably talking to Asian people all day where you're at. Let's just assume that, right? And their culture is different. How they talk is different. Maybe you're speaking their language, whatever. Maybe you're home dialect or whatever. And, you know, um, your, your, your thinking is different, right? Basically. So when you come here or when you talk to people here, here, people in the States, they're, most of the people here are like, uh, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to hear your problems. I got my own problems. Um, and sometimes, you know, if they hear that in your voice, like, I don't know, I'm just desperate to have a job. They, they know it. They hear it. And they won't hire you because, oh, this person sounds too desperate. What's wrong, right? I mean, believe it or not, they, they do that. And take the fact that maybe they're calling or you're Asian, they can hear it in your voice, right? Or your name, let's say. Okay. And they have they have pre preconceived, so it's almost like a uh, what do you call it? A um a pattern. So pattern recognition, almost like um everybody does this, by the way. I don't know why anybody doesn't recognize this, but everybody has like a pattern recognition system built in their brain, right? Basically like this. If you see an orange, you have a bunch of oranges, you have like five oranges, right? So you have five oranges that you see, and one has a bruise on it, right? And you can see, oh, that's bruised. So the first time that you open that orange, you've never seen a bruised one before. You see a bruised one, you open it up. It's mushy. Maybe it doesn't look nice to you. Maybe it's, you don't want to consume it, so you throw it away, or you cut that bruised part out, basically, right? Well, the same thing with um, you know people. You look for, you have patterns, so obviously they've studied individuals. Maybe they've talked to a lot of people and they're looking, they have a pattern built in their brain about certain cultures, about certain individuals, um, traits, whatnot. And the best thing you can do for yourself as an Asian person is sound like you're an extrovert. Don't sound introverted. You know, I don't say that I talk really fast, like talk really fast. I would just say you, what you're demonstrating to them when you have a GitHub site is, hey, I, I can, I've done something. I've shown the marketplace. I'm just, just relying on my degree or my, you know, my degree to, to hold me, to, to move me forward. I'm actually doing something for the market. I'm actually a doer. I'm not just a rely on my degree. Right. Um, I don't know if you know this or not. When you talk to some recruiter sometimes or some HR people, you might be talking to a doctor and you know, they're not, some, most of the time they don't tell you I'm a doctor, such and such. Hi, I'm such and such, right? Or whatever. Or they don't, if they're like an engineering degree, they won't say like, I'm an engineer, I'm engineer such and such. No, that only happens, I think, in other countries. It doesn't happen in the States. And like, you know, hey, I'm Bob, right? Uh, engineer Bob. Like, okay. Or maybe you're talking to somebody who's a CEO. They won't say CEO such and such. And nobody refers to him as, you know, CEO. They'll say Mr. Or they'll say their first name, Bob or whatever. Or it's a girl, Sally or Fred or whatever. Susan, whatever, right? So let's get that out of there. So what you're demonstrating, obviously, when you have a, a, a GitHub site and a WordPress site, even a YouTube or a Teachable site, is you're demonstrating, hey, I've actually taught what I know to the market. And I'm validating, basically, you know, um, you're just validating your skill set. And you, that's going to separate, that's instantly going to separate you from your competition. Because... Those individuals you're going to school with, those other 99 individuals you're going to school with, they don't have those things. They're not going to have a GitHub site. They're not going to have a WordPress site or a Teachable site or a YouTube site. Most likely, they're too not shy. They're not insecure. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to rely on my degree, you know, to get me there, you know, to wherever it is. Or, hey, you know what? I'm just going to work in this country in Asia 
I'm not trying to go anywhere else because obviously if you don't know this, you spend a lot more money when you don't work in your home country. I'll just tell you that. If you live in the States, you're going to spend a lot more money than you would if you live in your home country. Of course, you're going to make more, but you're also going to spend more money. And so that's your competition. Your 99 people out there, they're not doing this stuff. And definitely they're not doing it from the first year. Because why wait until the year four to start doing this? It makes no sense. Because, you know, oh, I'm going to race to get a job, right? Everybody here is, you know, they've done four years and we're going to race to get a job. All right. Congratulations. Good to go, guys. Yeah. Good to go, girls. You know, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Now you're competing with 900 people, 99 people who have the same degree you do, right? In a saturated market in whatever country you live in, right? Asia, Asian country you live in. Well, well, here's the strategy. Instead of doing that, take the four years, right? I know some countries you can't leave until you're a certain age to work anywhere. Well, take that those four years and develop yourself, get your skill set down, get your marketplace down, get your GitHub site, get your WordPress, get your YouTube, get your Teachable, um, get a podcast on Anchor or wherever, Spotify, Anchor. Um, get your skill set down. That way you have four years of like um, learning how to do it or, you know, practicing interviews. That way when you walk in, you're not desperate. After four years, you're not desperate to take the first job and you understand how much you're worth. This is really the tall tale sign here. When you do these type of things, when you talk to recruiters out there and you talk to HR people, you're going to know what you're worth. You're, you're going to know what you're worth. You're going to know what you're worth in, in different countries. You're really going to know that. Oh, okay, I'm worth X, Y, Z, right? You're really going to understand that. And all that's going to do is give you more confidence. That's what we're doing here, basically, right? So part of it is confidence, part of it is skill set. So I'd like to thank everybody for listening to this podcast and have a great day.